Well, according to some of the comments I've gotten on YouTube, today's the big day for a lot of you. I'm gonna start working on the beams. So what I'm planning on doing is using these two by eights. And there's a couple of them here. And two by eights are really seven and a quarter inches wide. Whenever you go to the store and you buy a two by four, it's not actually two inches by four inches, it's actually an inch and a half by three and a half inches. And these are no different. These two by eights are actually inch and a half by about seven and a quarter inches. I've ripped down some sheets of 716 OSB plywood and I'm actually going to put this in between these two two by eights and I'm going to glue the heck out of them and then nail the heck out of them and then that's going to be my beam. So you might be asking yourself, you know, Bretley, is that going to be strong enough? I don't know. Um, I would like to think that I kind of know what I'm doing. The spans here aren't that they're not that long. So this span here is a little over nine feet. This span here is about 11. This span here is just under 10. And then I have the little office. That span right there is just under nine. This span here, I think it was about 10. And then of course this doesn't really make a difference. Um, it's gonna be Spanning that little bit across the top there isn't gonna be anything. So the basic principle behind me building these beams is I have 10 foot posts for my building. And what I thought about doing at first was framing this up to a little over nine and then getting some super long uh, two by tens and spanning the entire width of the building. The issue is is it has a vaulted ceiling in here and I didn't want to lose some of that space. So when I pull a vehicle in here or I'm messing around cutting plywood or something, you know, four by eight sheets of plywood, I want to make sure I have a little bit of ceiling height. So the idea here is that I made these little walls. Um, I mean, I guess they're functional at the end of the day, but what they're going to do is hold my beams up and so we're gonna, I'm gonna put the beams right here on top of the wall. It's gonna go up another seven and a quarter. And then I'm gonna span two by eights across to the other side. So then that'll give me, you know, another, I don't know, I guess that seven and a quarter inches of height. I'd rather not lose that if I can avoid it. So I have the top plate on all of my walls. And like I said before, if you'd watched a previous video, when these walls tie into the other walls, that top plate actually goes in behind on the other wall to the back of the other wall and gets nailed in. So everything's tied together as one big piece. This side is maybe a little bit shaky still. So as you recall from the first framing video, I went and put tap cons in to anchor the walls down to the floor. I found some of these bolts in my garage, so I went and put in my old garage, so I went and put these in instead. And I also put this plywood on these two walls. So whenever you frame up a building, like if you come over to this side, like I said, still a little bit shaky. There's nothing really substantial to hold it together. But when you put that sheathing on these walls, it makes them really rigid. And so you can come over here, and I'm like pulling on this side and I can't hardly move it because of the bolt in the bottom holding the wall in place. And then that plywood makes it really rigid. I also put the plywood strategically on these walls because this is where my tool bench is gonna be. So I figure when I go to hang stuff up, I can just kind of screw into the plywood and this is a little bit thicker. It's like three quarter inch plywood that I put on here. It's a little bit thicker, so I'll just be able to put screws in here and hang things up. And so not only does it make the building rigid, the little inside structure here rigid, but it also serves for tool hanging in the future. 
One last detail I forgot to mention is that where these beams are gonna sit at the top, I've actually tripled up the studs here. So you'll see triple studs. It's the same thing on this side. Everywhere where these beams are gonna sit, that's a quadruple stud. That was an engineering flaw on my part. But I have triple studs on here. And up at the top, this is actually gonna shoot out to the edge of the wall and then shoot down in the front of the wall. So I don't have any triple studs over there. It would be the wall that actually holds it up. And same thing on that side. So in case you were wondering why I thought about putting these pieces of plywood in between the two by eights. If you look at the plywood, you can see it's pretty flimsy. When you push down when it's on its set, when it's laying flat, when you put it up on end, it becomes really rigid and it won't bend up and down. I'm cutting on that characteristic of the plywood when I build these beams. These beams are gonna be holding up the two by eights going across and they'll be holding up the insulation and the half inch drywall. And so this will be a hard ceiling, which means it just has a drywall on it. And there's not a whole lot of weight involved in that. And I'm gonna have no storage um, on top of those two by eight joists that I put in the ceiling. So I think these beams are gonna be plenty strong for what I'm uh, building them to do. I'm gonna go put some blocks on the ends of these walls. So when I set the beams up there, I can just temporarily nail them into the blocks that I put up there. And also it'll help stabilize the beam until I tie it all together and make a really good connection. Okay, so I'm going to start with this beam first and I'm going to go through the end wall and come over and split this wall right here and I'm going to build the beams, set it in place and as it gets split with this other beam on the back side is where I'm going to glue another one of these strips of plywood on and nail it in to make one solid piece and then I'll make a good connection to the top of the wall. Okay, 144 and a half inches. These boards are actually a little bit longer than 12 feet. They're not actually a true, true 12. And you'll also notice on a lot of these, the ends aren't cut just straight. So it wouldn't hurt to go, and that's what I'm gonna do. Cut the ends off straight, and then I'll measure out my 12 and half an inch, or 144 and a half an inch. So remember when I crowned the studs for my walls, if we have our two by four here, remember I was, I was talking about how, how there was kind of a natural bow to it. Every once in a while you get a super straight two by four, but every board had just a little bit of bow to it. Sometimes it's just not noticeable. So if you didn't wanna do that with your walls, no big deal. You just won't have as nice of a wall with these. It is absolutely crucial that you crown these properly. Anytime you build anything structural, whether it's a deck or anything, 
you wanna make sure that that crown goes up. So as you have your board here, and there's just kind of a natural crown, of course, it's kind of exaggerated. The force from the other boards is coming down and creating this to be just a little bit more even, where if you had it upside down, it would just create more of a bow. Okay, so these are pretty straight. I spent a lot of time picking these out at the store, so I'm getting a crown where this one is actually crowning up this way. And with this board, it's actually doing the same thing. It's actually crowning up, if you look real close. So just draw an arrow on here to remember whether you're building a deck or anything. You just draw the arrows on them and lay them out. And then when you put them in place, you already know which way they're supposed to stand up. Okay, so I have my plywood cut to length. There's actually a full eight foot piece and then four foot and a half an inch piece. Those will be butted up together. I'm using liquid nails, heavy duty glue to put these together. I'm gonna tack it together with a Pazlov gun. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put these larger nails in. They've got a thicker shank on them and they'll be better for the sheer strength. And I'm gonna give it just a little bit of an angle. You don't wanna put these in just straight in case you start to pull out or wiggle out under stress. You wanna give them a little bit of an angle. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll angle them one way put a couple of them in one way, and then I'll go back and angle it the other. And so not only are these gonna help with the shear strength, but also the glue is gonna help hold this whole beam together.
Okay, one beam down. Got a little tired at the end there. I was actually out here working last night. Had my bigger hammer, and of course I can't find it now. So, getting a little tired using the little hammer, but we'll get this, or I'll get this, I'll get this beam into place, show you how it's gonna start looking. Okay, the first beam's in place. And I was a little bit concerned about just trying to brace these up with two by fours, whether it was gonna be strong enough to hold it up. And it looks like it's doing okay. I think I'm still gonna maybe put another two by four in here. And in hindsight, maybe I should have put, maybe I should have built this wall out of two by sixes, but it's still pretty, still pretty solid. And I noticed this when I was framing. I don't know if you can see this, but you can see how the stud, hopefully you can see that. You can see how the, stu the stud wall is not against the building. And I just happened to notice this when I was framing. These outside walls of the metal building actually aren't plumb up and down. So I, did my best to make these ones pretty straight, the best I could. So I'm not really worried about that beam. The beam's pretty heavy, actually. When I was sitting there lifting it up, I struggled a little bit, but I think that's gonna be okay with that weight sitting up there. And I'm definitely gonna go ahead and put some more plywood on this side. I think I'm gonna put it on this wall here. So I'll get this other beam up, get everything where I want it get this other two by four in and I'm definitely going to put that plywood on there just to stiffen everything up. And then I was actually going to frame around each one of these, just put like a little box around it. And I decided I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to run a two by four. That's about seven feet there. I'm just going to run a two by four across and then there'll be cross members that just go out to the beam. I guess maybe I should show you this one. So there'll be cross members that just go out to the beam. And I just put a couple sheets of drywall in there and that'll be closed. So in the next couple days, I'm going to get these beams put together. And in the next video, I'll go ahead and start installing them and show you what I'm going to do on the back to connect them all and basically make them all one big beam going across. And then I have some brackets that I'm going to connect into the walls to make sure they stay in there solid. And then I'll probably put some bracing um, from the back of the wall up to the top just to keep it from deflecting at all. So um, stay tuned for that video. Hopefully I can get it out a lot quicker than I did this one. Things have been hectic and speaking of hectic, I gotta, I wish I could keep working on this building. Um, we had a huge snowstorm here in Pennsylvania, so I'm gonna go deal with that. And for any of you that have small dogs, you might relate to this, but I have to go Usually what I do is I go take my quad and go drive around the yard in a big circle so my little dogs can go out and use the bathroom and stuff. So that's what I'm gonna be dealing with for the next little while. If you like this video, uh, like, share, and subscribe. And definitely subscribe if you wanna catch in the next videos. Thanks.